Welcome to the SWBL podcast presented by 1356 Public House. And tonight I am joined by Chris Metter, captain of the SWBL Twins, one of the most decorated wiffle ball players in history. Um, Chris, how you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? I can't complain. But I'm yeah, I'm doing I'm doing great. We've been <clears throat> knocking these captain interviews out, these team previews, and you know, we're shoot we're less than a month away at this point so it is uh it's coming hot and heavy but uh um, yeah yeah it's uh it's always good to talk to you to talk with a ball with you and just to catch up with you a little bit too we don't really see each other much in the off season so um as usual we're gonna break down everything with the roster the schedule um the division kind of all the things you're used to doing on these captain interviews and um and hopefully just have some fun with it so Let's start off. Yeah, let's start off first looking back at season 21. Um, you guys go six and four. You win your division. Um, I believe you're the three seed in going into the playoffs. <clears throat> so what do you, you know, when you think back about season 21, what do you, you know, anything stand out, any moments, any, or just overall kind of what your thoughts are on on the way last year went? Yeah, our goal was always just to make the playoffs, ideally not be in like a wild card game. And uh, then go from there and hope we, you know, get lucky from there. I think we struggled through the regular season, but figured it out. We did what we needed to do. We got enough. We got enough to get in. And then I think we were pretty good at holding the Orioles. We just we didn't score. I had a really bad strikeout with the bases loaded. Uh, it just comes down to a couple at bats that. Um, you know, matter a little bit more than the rest. Mm-hmm. and uh we just didn't really take advantage of certain situations yeah i mean they're a tough team too but <clears throat> you've always kind of said it's a it's a funny ball it's a ball with holes in it and so things can go one way or the other way and you just try to limit the chances that it goes you know the other way so um you know still a good year you guys you know we'll kind of get into a little bit, but you know, you guys had the second highest run differential last year. So it wasn't, even though your record, you know, you were tied with two other teams at six and four with, from a record standpoint, you know, you guys had this, like I said, the second highest run differential of any team, um, re, you know, regardless of your, of your record. So um, still very successful, still very, very much uh, a strong offensive team. Um and so, you know, and, and you're bringing pretty much everybody back, you know, yourself is back, Spencer, um, sorry, Corey, Will Rath, um, your ace is coming back. I've heard rumors and I don't, I don't really know what's going on. And everybody's asked me and I have no answer. Is Ed Lowe playing this year? Uh, as far as we know, he's playing. Okay. Uh, we're as, we're as tuned in as you are okay. when it comes to Ed Lowe. Uh, okay. he's a wild card every year at the end of the year. He tells us he might not come back. So, Oh, but really? He, okay. And then he gets into it. So we're assuming he's going to be there. Um, and yeah, we're counting on him to be there, I guess. Yeah. Well, he, he's obviously one of the more beloved players in the league and he's sort of been your heart. Um, you could say over, you know, obviously you've got your three, three headed monster, you and Corey and Spencer, but, um, you know, he's always been sort of the glue, you could say, for your team. Um, you know, we've we've talked in previous podcasts about when, when Edlo has a really good year, you guys are really hard to beat. And then when he has down years, you know, you kind of have to kind of change things up a little bit. So he kind of uh, is a pivotal part, but I didn't know he had been debating on retirement or, or whatever over the past couple of years. Well, yeah, he has, you know, twins and uh, his wife – has their family vacation on Memorial weekend every year. Ah. So it's growing more and more difficult when it's just him to kind of do it. And, um, I think he'll, I mean, I think he'll be there. Uh, I just think it's kind of growing harder for him and he may have to limit some games, but as long as he's there, that's all that really matters for the weekend. Right. Well, with that being the case, is there like, What's the plan, I guess, then for is is that mean Will is going to be hitting more often? Um, is he I mean, he's he's had some really good years when he gets his opportunities at the plate. So what's what's kind of the plan with the lineup there then? 
Yeah, last year we kind of split it up. I think pretty evenly. Will got really hot, and then he kind of cooled down. And Edla was the uh, inverse. So we'll kind of just feel it out. Um, you know, term, depending on matchups, probably mm -hmm. who gets to start off, and then uh, we'll probably just have to ride whoever's hot if we uh, make the playoffs. Okay. Any other? Um, I mean, you guys, like I said, you guys have majority of the same roster. You've had the same roster year over year for the past shoot. I don't even know how long ago did Corey join the team. It's been a Probably while. Three years now. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. So, um, any anything else that might change, or I mean, you guys pretty much sticking with the formula that's gotten you where you're at now. Nothing that I've heard. I mean, if somebody's leaving, I don't know about it yet. So yeah. uh, as far as I know, we're all coming back, all staying together. Um, we think we have, you know, enough to win. Mm -hmm. And we're in the right situations. We just need a couple things to go our way congruently. And that's really all it takes. Yeah, cool. Um, well, let's look at the division next. Um, you guys are in the corner pub and grill division with the Astros and the White Sox. So when we had the draw, when you guys, when this kind of all played out, what were your first thoughts about the division? Probably the best division. Um, there's at this point, there's not many teams where you're looking to pull and you're excited. There's just not, not many like that anymore. Um, we we did want to get the Marlins just for payback purposes. They beat us last year, mm -hmm. so we did want to get them. But uh, there's really no bad teams. There's no bad draw, and uh, we I mean we think it's the hardest the hardest pool. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I think you can you can kind of always say that about you know who you think is the toughest tier three team anymore if if you feel like you have the toughest tier three team usually that division on paper looks to be the toughest um but you've got you know you've got the astros there and that tier two who made the playoffs last year too so i think a lot of people at least when i've been doing these captain interviews are agreeing that this division looks really tough and really competitive um and it should make for some good games hopefully um and uh you know there's always the talk of is this the year that maybe all three teams make the playoffs from one division and it's, a, it's so hard to do, but I guess you could say maybe there's a chance this year. What do you think? Yeah, it's hard. It's just yeah. hard mathematically. There's six losses there. S to spread them out perfectly would be really, really rough, really hard to do, but definitely possible. Um, you need a bunch of five and five teams probably throughout yeah. the league, which is definitely yeah. possible these days. Um, yeah, I, I think it's possible. Um, I hope it is our division this year that'd be great it would be cool i've thought of, i was like you know if i'm ever I'll in that it. position i'm gonna we're, we'll have to do like a picture like with all the all the players <laughs> from all three teams like that with the ticket punched or whatever sam does now like that would be cool yeah so, there's gonna there's gonna be a year um i'll probably jinx it and it'll probably be this year there's gonna be a year where at some point the last game of the year is gonna matter yeah and if they tie they both move on and i can't wait I can't <laughs> wait for whoever's in it and whoever is watching it. Very angry. So yeah, that would I'm be. I would that. I think, yes, I think that's why Sam traditionally puts two uh, lower expected teams in the last game. But I oh, know. I had never. Yeah, I never thought about that. I mean, he's always saved it. He always says it's that that toilet bowl. Basically, who finished eight and nine the year before? Yeah. yeah. Um. So. But I had never thought about that being. I don't the think case. that's why, but so, it, it worked yeah. out that way. I mean, it could always still end up your your scenario could still be the second to last game because yeah, yeah you know, those two teams could potentially already be out of it, and it doesn't matter anyway for that yeah. last game. So I guess, yeah, and I guess you can't tie, but you know, keep keep the run differential close. Yeah, that would be, yeah, that would be interesting, especially if you're that that other team sitting there having to watch it. Yeah, like yeah. You, you just you just have to keep it under like eight. And yeah, you just literally walk the first twelve batters, and or you know you're in the fourth inning, you just walk twelve in a row. Like oh, we yeah. lose by something. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I could see it happening in this league for sure. So, um, all right, let's look at the schedule a little bit. Have you had time to kind of digest it, look at it, um, 
I know not you, really. I think we're playing an early game. You like have, yeah, before. yeah. You have a, an early season game against the A's, um, and then you don't have a game. You're the only team not playing on opening day right now. So, um, and then you know, for the most part, it looks fairly balanced. You know, you've got four games: Saturday, Sunday. Um, you start off, you know, on Saturday first thing in the morning, the first game that day against the Astros, so a division game there. Um, and then you, you know, obviously you finish your season uh, against the White Sox, so another division game to finish your to finish your season there. But you don't really, you know, you don't you're playing, you don't you you sh- spread out the Yankees and the Orioles. You're not playing those guys back to back. You're not playing a bunch of uh, the division games back to back. Um, so it seems pretty balanced. Um, I know, you know, your approach has always been let's wh- where are our six wins at? Let's get those six wins and then see if we can steal a couple others. Um, so yeah, any, like any matchups, any, anything that you guys are really looking forward to, maybe a game you have circled on the schedule. Uh, well, I'm digging the, the early game against the A's. It's giving me throwback vibes to old school, old school Skibby when we had to play on like a random Tuesday at 10 AM yeah. whenever the people were free. So I, I kind of like that vibe. I'm also okay not playing opening day. It allows you to kind of enjoy it, not have to worry about doing anything. Mm-hmm. I kind of like that, to be honest. Um, yeah, same mindset. We just want to get six wins. Last year, we barely got six wins, but it would take quite a quite a feat statistically to not get you in with six wins. So yeah, that's our mindset. Uh, we started off rough last year and had a chip away, um, but we're prepared to do that. I mean, anything can happen on that game the week before. Uh, it's, that's a wild card. The conditions will be different than the weekend. So it'll Mm -hmm. be unique, but it'll be fun. We're, we're glad we got the A's. I think that was our stipulation is we wanted to, we had to play the A's if we were, Oh yeah. If we were doing a standalone game, (laughs) that's what Spencer said, but it worked out. Any reason Spencer really wanted the A's or you guys wanted the A's? I have no idea. Probably, okay. I don't know. Probably poking at Steve Hayes or something. Okay. But it'll yeah. be fun. We like them. They're they're awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that game might be the only one Paul makes an appearance at. You know, he's not going to be there for the weekend. So you guys may have the only opportunity where he, he has a chance to get a win. So we, we don't know definitively. Honored. Yeah. So. Um. All right. Cool. Well, let's talk about the power rankings a little bit. So. You know the t- the the hitting, fielding, pitching power rankings have come out, but I I want to talk mainly just overall team power rankings. So where do you think you'll be ranked, and where should you be ranked? I think we'll be in the two to three range, and I think that's pretty appropriate. Uh, I've always said as long as the defending champs come back, they should be one. I could understand the argument for Yankees two, even one. So two or three will probably be put three. And I think that's appropriate for the past few years, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like a lot of teams, um, you know, a lot of captains, a lot of players, they, they, even though it's not as well, you say that, but before for a long time and like going back to the Rays days and, and even the early part of, you know, the twins, there was always four or five teams that you could pretty much always write into the playoffs. Like, and then the other teams were so far behind and that's changed that, that parody has gotten a lot more muddied. And um, so there's a lot more teams, I think in the running for the playoffs all the time, but I still think that most people still view a top three. Like, I still feel like, you know, and that includes you guys, right? That top tier. I don't really feel a lot of teams really think that that top tier really is changing. So I think three is probably pretty accurate, two, three um, being right there. Um, It's just interesting what people think, especially as Mm -hmm. changes have happened. Obviously, Jackson going to the Orioles was the biggest news of the season. Um, And... uh, so you you never kind of know where that's going to land and what people are going to think and how that's going to adjust thought processes. But um, yeah, I think, I think three's, you know, three, two, um, 
I, I can't imagine you'd be four just based on the feedback I've gotten. Um, cause I don't know who you'd, unless you want to put the Rockies in because of the bounce back year they had, but they finished six and four as well and, and lost to you guys in the division. So I don't see that happening either. So, well, let's do, um, let's pick some, some division winners, but not your division. So, uh, I want you to pick the division winners for the other two. Uh, the Cardinal blinds division has the Orioles, the Rockies and the A's. Who are you picking to win that division? Orioles, Rockies, and the A's. Uh, it would be tough for the Orioles to lose that division, probably. Okay. And then in the Ketty Nice Center division, you've got the Yankees, the Marlins, and the Expos. I like the Marlins this year. I like them. That's my, my sleeper team. Really? Yeah, I like the Marlins. I like what they're doing over there. Sweet. I like shake what they're building. It, shake it up, yeah. Yeah, if Luke and Jordan have a, a bounce back year, I mean, they didn't have terrible years, but it wasn't the year they had before. And Josh has gotten better. And if their pitching continues to try to take a couple steps, yeah, they could be, they're, you know, they're a tough team to beat. So, all right, now pick your, pick your, or pick your wild cards, your two wild card teams then. That would make the Yankees the wild card. And um, I would say the Astros. Okay. I'd like that. All right. Well, that takes us to hard hitters. Um, random questions for Chris. Some wiffle ball re- related, some not. <clears throat> so uh, just off the top of your head here, what is the final record for the Twins? Say seven and three. Seven and three. Who is the team MVP for season 22? Hopefully Ed Lowe. Yes. Let's go, Ed. <laughs> what is your favorite show? Or what are you watching right now? Favorite show. I've never been a show guy. My favorite show all time is probably Prison Break back in the day. Ooh. Yeah, Wentworth Miller. Yes. I used to, get, I used to have a shaved head. Did you really? I always say I look like Wentworth Miller. So Yeah, I could see it. You Love the some, first season. Best season in sleeves. television history. It was really good, and they were in that time period where the stri- writer strike happened, and it got real weird for a while. It got it went straight downhill, but yeah, it amazing. was real good. I loved that show in college; it was awesome. All right, who will lead the league in home runs in season twenty two? Say, let's say Jordan Smith. Jordan, it's a good pick. Who is your least favorite team to play against? Least favorite team to play against? That's a good question. Mm, honestly, probably just the Yankees. Okay. Because there's never going to be a leisure game. Yeah. There's never going to be a game that's just, all right, this is for fun. Let's. This game doesn't matter. You know? Yeah. Every game is going to be uh, an important High, high strong game yeah yeah they're great guys but uh they're tough yeah. to beat too so it yeah you kind of have to step up in that and it makes it i don't know just harder so yeah. um what is your favorite tradition of your team favorite tradition i like that every year we all hang back after the weekend's over um uh, we vibe in the pool we used to do the hot tub. Um, usually hang out with the Yankees mm-hmm. and some of the Orioles. Uh, that's my favorite just because it's like a conclusion to the weekend, win or lose. Obviously, the vibes are better if you win, but regardless, it's like a hard conclusion to the weekend. And um, just Monday, Monday night, Memorial Week, Memorial Weekend, good vibes. It's just a, it's a good time. Yeah. I've also heard that's a lot of the time where people start saying, okay, what if this person goes here? What if this happens here? And yeah. That used to be the to rumor start... mill. Yeah. The hot tub back in the yeah. day. Spencer used to call it the big boys table. That's where the, <laughs> and he was like, maybe one day Ben, where you can come join us. And I was like, I, please, I would like to. Something that like that. Fun. Yeah. All right. Who's going to lead the league in strikeouts as a hitter? Strikeouts as a hitter. You got to have a lot of at bats. Um, Strikeouts as a hitter. 
I'm going to say Ty. He's led the league multiple times. So I'm going to say yeah. Ty if he shows up. Yeah. Uh, who's going to lead the league in strikeouts as a pitcher? Um, Probably Jackson. They're probably okay. going to shove Jackson. They're going to probably just use him up for the regular season. And... Yeah, I've been Which wondering probably. how they were going to do. I mean, they've got three really, really strong pitchers now, and there's not enough innings. And, and I've been curious how they were going to kind of deploy, yeah. but that makes sense too if you're going to let him eat up a ton of innings so that you can save Brett and Sam for the playoffs. That's my guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll probably throw the max innings. Cool. Um, all right. Who wins the championship? I'm going to say the Twins. Twins, okay. got to say the Twins. All right. We're going to play a little game called okay. Start Start Bench Trade. So from your team, your players on the Twins, you have to start one player, bench one player, trade one player. I'll start Spencer, bench Corey, and trade Edlow. Okay. That was the yeah. fastest answer. Of that everybody. Wasn't hard. That, that wasn't hard. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, this has been a really quick one, which is great. Um, also, just for the, you know, the six people maybe that listen to this, Chris, this is our 50th episode. Oh, perfect. So I knew special. Yeah, this is a special episode. Uh I could in the air. Yeah. So um part of I'm um, I'm I'm really kind of happy that we've reached 50. And then at the same time, I'm like, man, I've been hosting this thing for three years. It's taken me three years to get to 50. That's, that's pretty a lot, terrible. though, if you think about it. That's a lot. Yeah. From an individual so, standpoint, that's a lot, I'd yeah. say. Yeah. So, so pretty sweet. And yeah, I'm glad that you get to be a part of it. So, just another thing you can put in your, uh, in your trophy right. case. Is My that imaginary you... mantle. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So who who better to have on the podcast for number 50? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, well, guys, that's going to do it for this episode with Twins Captain Chris Metter. Um, our sponsors for this season are 1356 Public House, Cardinal Blinds and Shutters, Cutting Ice Center, Corner Pub and Grill, Spencer Gear, Chill Designs, Breck X, Everdolce Vita, Four Hands Brewery, Suede Dispensary, Lodge X, Johnny Pops, Ballast Dental Care, and Andy's Frozen Custard. Uh, we thank all of our partners, uh, the new and the returning. Uh, we couldn't do this without your help, and uh, we just love that um, – these uh these these partners just continue to come back year after year so thank you very much um we've got some more episodes as we lead up to season 22 we'll have a i think a full breakdown of the power rankings we'll probably have a season preview close to the time that we're getting to memorial day weekend and um yeah if we can squeeze anything else in we will but otherwise we'll see you at the blur on memorial day weekend chris why don't you go ahead and take us home man i just want to Thank the Skibbies. I mean, all the Skibbies sacrifice that they make. Uh, Kay and Kevin literally donating their house for us for a weekend. Sam and Gus have made countless sacrifices over the decades for us, for us to enjoy something together. And that's something that's really, you just can't thank enough. And I just want to, you know, reiterate how thankful and appreciative we are for what they've provided for us. Well said. Love that. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining and listening in. Um, and we will see you next time.